Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kid in a Sweet Shop. So today I've come to meet someone that was in one of the biggest boy bands ever. He's also a brilliant racing car driver. It was so crazy, there was about three, I think three cars turned on the reds. and has a car collection to die for. So make sure before I go and have a chat with him that you like and subscribe, because guess what? We're going to weekly videos. Let's go and meet him. Howard, I finally got you to sit down and have a chat. Yes. Well, anyway, welcome to Kid in the Sweet Shop. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. I'm just very excited in your little amazing dungeon yes. of beautiful vehicles. Let's hope the lights don't go off. They keep going on and off, Do they? don't they? Yeah. <laughs> they won't be like that. Yeah, sensors on them. <laughs> um, anyway, my darling, look, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. So, um, you know, obviously known you for many, many years. Um, you know, being this incredible pop star. Um, and then we kind of cross paths in the, the motoring world. Yes. So I kind of want to start, um, you know, in the early days, um, you know, where you were brought up. Why did cars become, um, you know, such a, an important part of your life? Um, so, you know, I, I know that you were born in Lancashire. Yep. Um, and kind of did all your schooling, everything up there. At what point did kind of cars and you kind of fall in love? Um, I guess it was a real slow burner for me. It wasn't, yeah. I, I don't think I was ever the sort of person that was at the car poster on the wall. So I you was didn't? more, no. I, I what had did B you have on the wall? BMXs. Did you? I had BMX pictures, people doing jumps, sort of yeah, ramps. And, um, yeah, I was into BMXing, I was into breakdancing, body popping, and that was kind of my teenage life. And right. I, you know, you always had your eye on a car that you thought, oh, one day, yeah. I will have one of those. Which, what was that one? Well, it's as simple as saying like a 560 SEC with a Mercedes, <laughs> yeah. which is like, yeah. and, um, and even in the early days of Take That, when I was walking down the road, um, my, my manager pointed at, um, of all things, a Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm going, <laughs> and it, that's the and dream. He, and he said, one day you'll have one of those. That's what he said. <laughs> and I thought, yes, yes, I hope so. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was not really a massive car fan in my teenage years, although I appreciated them and I used to be quite envious of the people who lived down the road because they used to race round in um, in those, uh, what are they called, the mid uh, midgets? Yes, yeah, M what? MGs. It's MG midgets. Yeah. And um, they used to race round in those and they had the Mark 1 Escorts, which is... Yeah, I know, so this, so this is, it's right behind This is you. one of the dreams here, this Mark 1 Escort. It's um, amazing. It's not, it's got a Mexico shell, but it's got, um, it's got a, a two litre turbo engine, a Cosworth, so it's... Um, amazing. So it's crazy in the rain. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, so I got one of my dreams, and I used to see those. But do you think it was back then when you kind of used to subconsciously you saw them race, and you were like, "Cool." Oh, no, I think it. Pl I think that. it planted the seed to actually yeah. get a Mark One Escort, and this Brilliant. is. And again, same with my brothers because I was I spent a lot of time with my brothers on the streets, and yeah. they obviously saw the same thing. And as soon as I told it's them so that I bought iconic. one of these, they were like. It's so iconic. Yeah, it's such a great car. It really is. Um, but okay, going back to, to um, kind of growing up. So I have here, did you train as a, as a, as a vehicle painter? Yeah. So this was still in teenage years. So you, you were still, you know, you wanted to be around cars. Yeah, so, so yeah, I spent most of my life um, from being 16 um, with cars. Right. I did a YTS scheme at um, Fiat. Um, which dealt with Lancia, Citroen and yeah. Fiat. Yeah. And um, obviously they were proper rust buckets, as we know Fiat's used to be. Yeah. Oh, I don't think they are anymore. But, <laughs> no. um, and then I, then I got a job. Um, I went, I lost my YTS scheme and I was literally walking around the streets, going around to different garages, trying to find a job. Went in the office of one place, this place called Wimpole Garages in uh, Ashton Underline and asked if they had a job. And um, they gave me a job, and I was working on more insurance cars, insurance yeah. jobs, which were 
better cars and I did a lot of actually um, I did a lot of E-type Jags, shells of E-type Jags yeah. inside of them. And it was, I mean, the, it was a lot of very labor intensive of rubbing down the inside of these cars, you know, yeah. with this sandpaper and, yeah. you know, you, you, you literally, your fingernails. Nails bleeding. Bleeding and yeah. rubbed right down. No, you had no bloody thumbprints yeah. left, oh you know, God. fingerprints. So, um, yeah, and then come 2021, that's when I um, eventually got my half day off to do an audition and luckily I got out of it. So, I mean, so the, when you were working in the YTS, you weren't, you weren't kind of doing the musical side at all, or were you still kind of doing break dancing? Because I know that dancing was such a huge part yeah. of growing up as well. Were you doing like competitions? I was um, a bedroom DJ. Right. So, so that's I, how it started. Yeah, that's how it sort of yeah. started. I had two double tape players and you used to link them up to edit them yeah. to go from one to another yeah. and make your own mixes from Amazing. these things. Um, and giving cassettes to your girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah, cassettes <laughs> and, and this, doing mixes, mix. going out and doing mixes and playing the mixes in the bedroom to your mates. Wicked, um, <laughs> love it. Yeah, I did a lot, quite a lot of dance competitions as well, whether Amazing. it was break dance or whether it was show dance. So, um, okay. and I, I was one of the early people, that one of the people that went on the um, on Come Dancing in the early days when, when Angela Rippon oh was God, one of the presenters amazing. and David, the, the Radio 2 guy, David, yes. oh, what's his name? I can't remember. Music. But yes, we did, we did that three years in a row and we won. Yeah. We won, the North West won the offbeat section. It wasn't Latin dancing it was doing, it was more um, yeah. offbeat, which is kind of jazz yeah. sort of. Um, and is that what you wanted? Did you do the dancing for fun and, or were you just kind of just doing a bit of everything to see when, what life's path was going to do. Yeah, I think that was one of the things that sort of got me off the streets, really, if you, if, yeah. if you like. Um, I was breakdancing, and the guy I was breakdancing, one of my best friends back then, Russell, his dad was the teacher of the, his show dance companies. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got into a team, and then we would go to Germany to these competitions, Brilliant. Tunisia. No, we didn't go many places. We went to Germany, Tunisia, and um, I think Finland and we did competitions and and then we got on the TV by doing Come Dancing. Did a few, so exciting. did a few dodgy videos as well, you know, what for pop, of... pop videos. Uh, really? <laughs> Not those sort Can of videos. You yeah. I was like, where are we yeah, gonna yeah, find yeah. them? Yeah, in loincloths. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's like, that's pretty much the uh, background really of, um, and actually, um, one of the guys that I met, one of the dancers I met in, in Tunisia, uh, me and my friend Russell, we were doing, it was the World Pairs competition. Yeah. So we were in loincloths, like dressed up as oh, like tars with all this black stuff all over our face. Brilliant. And we're doing this routine and like everyone was looking at us quite strange. <laughs> and we met this guy called Rolf, who's a gay guy. And, and I, I didn't know, I didn't, I've not met, met many gay people back yeah, then. Yeah. And I didn't even know he was gay, but I met him. <laughs> And he said, oh, you should do one of my friends is a photographer. You should start doing modeling. Yeah, because you're lovely and tall, lovely, beautiful oh, face. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, then, <laughs> and then, then I did this, um, I did this shoot with his friend and we got a portfolio together and I joined NMS, which is a Nigel yeah. Martin Smith's agency. agency. Yeah. And um, we did catwalk classes every Tuesday. And you, you I got didn't to, know and, this. Yeah, and you got told about, um, the best um, stuff to put on your face. It was yes. always Clarins and Clinique. Exactly. Back, back then. Yeah, yeah. Even though Clarins, I think, was the was it the men's or what? Which yeah. one was the men's? There was a men's version of Clinique and there was a women's version of Clinique. Did you get and, them the wrong way around? But the thing, no. But the <laughs> thing is, they used to rip you off because I think they used to charge more for the men's than they yeah. used to charge you for and the women's. And they were exactly suit. the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, so we we got taught all this stuff, and then eventually my manager said, oh, "Do you want to come and audition for the for a band?" Uh, that so was could time. you say you do, when you were DJing, it was obviously just voice. When did the kind of the the lyrical side and the vocal side? Were you just did you know that you could sing brilliantly? Um, I've, I've, you know, I've always been a I've always been a singer, but I've, I would never class myself as as a singer as as a yeah. great singer. If you know what I mean, I've always right. been great at. Um, the backing vocals and arrangement and you know I've done quite a few leads as well for the band but yeah. it was one of those things that you discover and in the audition that was one of the things we had to do we had to dance and we had to sing and okay. 
and a song and I've always... So you got to so going back to the audition, so literally, so it was the model agent that said, you will be brilliant, I've got this friend or something that's doing this casting and you went, oh, give, give that a go. Yeah, well, he was, he was the guy. He, oh, was, he was him The manager was, was the one that's getting oh, the stuff course. together. So he was there at the audition and I asked my boss, could I get half a day off when this was done as vehicle painting? So I literally turned up. <laughs> Your half fingers a day. bleeding. Honest, no, seriously, <laughs> honestly, my, my, my hands were full of paint because this is like permanent paint. Yeah. Dust in my hair. Oh, uh, I had to take on my overalls off, stinking of whatever I stunk of. Rushed in my little mini with the little wide wheels. Rushed in my mini to Manchester, <laughs> parked it somewhere. Did you the wheels out there? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they're like wild wheels and it was one of those that sounded loud, but it didn't go anywhere yeah, fast, exactly. you know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, all in the exhaust. Yeah, and then... Um, okay, go on, go on. And I, and I parked the car and I made it for half a day of the audition, whereas everyone was already there. They were already dancing on stage. Right, oh. And, um, and because I was already a dancer, I picked up the routine just like that and I think that was one of the... Brilliant. One of the reasons I got in... In the band, and so that was that. Literally, when did you find out after that audition that that? You'd I think a couple it? of weeks later, I just said, right. You, I mean, this wasn't like X Factor. This was like there was six people that turned up for this audition. Oh right, not who, who, ten thousand. Well, it, he wasn't yeah. really advertised globally. I don't believe. I think he'd like hand picked people who he re, who he genuinely yeah. wanted to come. Yeah. And I sort of knew Jason anyway from the Apollo days because we used to break dance every. Sunday at the Manchester Apollo and he was in like a street machine which is like one of the best yeah. breakdance groups in the UK Brilliant. and that's where I first saw him so I sort of knew his face straight away in a, a nice friendly face yeah um, and it was just like refreshing to see somebody like him already there who, yeah. was, who was a breakdancer as well brilliant and um, yeah and that's got the call they said right you're gonna join this band yeah I told my mum and she was gutted because I was, I was given a 10 pound a week I had to give From up the, my job. Yes, yeah, so you actually had to phone up and say, right, I've, I'm, I've got to yeah, stop with the e-types. Yeah, you're so silly. You're, you're leaving oh, your job yeah. to go in this band. And I said, I'm sure I'm making the right move here. <laughs> 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 no, you're not. <laughs> oh, my God. And then basically the rest is history yeah. because, I mean, you ended up being one of the biggest boy bands ever and, yeah, and it's, it's, just had... Uh, I mean, I just, I can't even begin to write down the, what you were up to, the number ones you had, the tours you had. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But you yeah. just had this incredible whirlwind of, of... And it still goes on. And it still goes it's on. still going on, yeah. So had a little sabbatical and then came back. Yeah, we, um, we had a little little ten year break, and yeah. then it came back, came back even bigger. Yeah, I know. We all had I we know. a couple of us had kids by then, and um, and the band is not as important as it what it as what yeah. it was. Your family life is, is more important, but yeah. I think that's what the great thing about how the how the band really worked better the second time round. Yeah, because, of course. You know what I mean? And I think once, you know, because I was, when I was modelling, it was 90s and we were all young and it was all very crazy and fun and, yeah, it was quite a whirlwind. And I think now, you know, the older head, I'm, you know, a parent, it's very much, I would so much more enjoy it yeah, yeah. now than, you know, going back to modelling. Sure. Not that I, well... Sure, well, you know, you know what your priorities are, don't you? you yeah, know, totally, you know but I mean? stronger, stronger head, I think, makes such a, such a, yeah. um, it's such a difference. Okay, but going back, so this was 95 when you got, the, when the band started? No, this is uh, 90. 90? 90. Crikey, okay. Yeah. Well, you. I don't know. Down, well, I don't. I was so many dates. I was like, oh my god, I don't know it was what. Literally I was late eighty nine when we. First it was late eighty nine. Late eighty nine, and then ninety was sort of like the official. So ninety to ninety five. So that's it. So it was ninety five when so Robbie 96, left the gang. Nine, it and was ninety to ninety six. That's when the bands were up. Ninety six right. April. So that was what, during this period. What happened with cars? Did you just literally non-stop in the studio touring? Cars were kind of put onto a back burner. Cars were again. You don't. I didn't really appreciate historic cars back then. So, yeah. you know, one of my my very first car was a Talbot Sunbeam in in, in the colours of the um, Lotus Sunbeam, yes. the dark, you know, the blue metallic. Oh my god. 
Um, and I wrote that off as well as another four cars when so I had a crash. So this was with the money, the first money you got from... Well, that was 200 quid. That was, okay, so... <laughs> that was 200 quid, that was like... So the band, and that was the first, you know, because it's kind of quite fun to see, you know, how the band does well, how did the cars yeah. get, obviously get better and better No, no, well. that's what I was going to say. You know, you, you, <laughs> you start off on your little 200 pound Tobit Sunbeam. Yeah. And it was, I, I'd had nine lessons, driving lessons, passed on my first time. And about four months Brilliant. later, I wrote the car off by braking in the rain, hitting one car, hitting another car, smashed into a car in the front, which smashed into another one oh, no. on a dual carriageway. Oh, uh, so that was at the side of the road. Then, uh, then uh, I upgraded to a silver mini with a blue vinyl roof of an antique dash, oh, wide cool. wheels, bucket seats, 850 engine that didn't go anywhere. You had to literally eh, up and hill, <laughs> eh, but it looked the dogs. Yeah, anyway. awesome. And then um, Vauxhall Astra, uh, and then from a Vauxhall Astra, I went on to a, um, a 190E, a Mercedes 190E. So when did the band start? When did, obviously, was the Mercedes when the band started? Oh, the Mercedes was probably 93. Okay, so you would yeah, okay, so, so this was getting perks of the job. Yeah, then. and then by 94, 90, yeah, 94, 95, I had a SL 500. Lovely. Um, and that was when we had the beautiful heat wave in the summer '95, oh, and driving, wafting, driving every day to driving every day with rehearsals <laughs> with the top down and the sub bass going off. With the arm out, yeah, yes, and, love it. And then by tw by um, 2000, I had a F three five five Berlinetta. Was that your first Ferrari? That was my first Ferrari, silver, blue Ooh. leather inside, and, Ooh, and I loved lovely. it. But I didn't. I didn't respect it. No. I don't know, but now I look back on the 355 and I think, what a what an no. excellent car, yeah. what a great noise. Yeah. Um, and I didn't look after it the way I should have looked after it. No, but we were young. I know. And young and foolish. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I, I sold that. Uh, then my second Ferrari, which was a 430 Scuderia. Yes. Um, that was great. Gosh, that was a great, I know. They're great. Gone. You suddenly saw those everywhere, didn't you? Yeah. 360s, 430s. Yeah, that was a good car. And um, and so, you know, the band was either, I can't remember when you got the 430, but but so you just had this brilliant career. Um, maybe you were in the sabbatical, um, but where, where, at what point did you want to go, oh, I want to I want to start racing? Was that much later on? That was much later. That was really late. I mean, my first race was at Silverstone. Um, I think it was possibly 2000 and... 16. Okay. That's how late it actually so was. So this, you'd already come back, had your reunion. Yeah. Yeah. And that was in one of those crappy A, A35s, A35s. Yeah, okay. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> no, but oh. it's a good way to start. It's a good way to start. <laughs> I know, well, I absolutely hated something. it because like, you know, we go around the corner when the wheel lifts off and then you go back <laughs> down to zero power again. Yeah. Because it had no, what is a differential on yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and everyone was like literally turning the cars upside down. You know, cars in front of you turning upside down, doors off. And you're thinking, oh my God, I, you know, these are pe brilliant. people actually own these cars yeah. and they've lent them out to these like <laughs> pop stars or people that were famous or sports stars. And yeah. all these cars are all smashed up. Oh my God, and zero respect. I know. Yeah, zero respect. It's a, good, it's a very good way to start. But so can we go back to, so after your 430, yeah. Did you did you always just have a one or two car kind of you know cars coming in cars going out, um, and did the collection start? I think the the first car I ever got was that um, the Mercedes two eighty SE convertible there, right. and actually it's I got it in um, when I was thirty nine years old, and actually it's got thirty nine H in it oh, just brilliant. by coincidence. So it's not a private registration. So at thirty nine was the first time I got a classic car. And I think I was inspired by Jason because Jason had a, um, he had an old 1968 SL, a gold one. Lovely. And I remember he had it all done up and he was driving down this road in just Cheshire, so cool. past this golf club. <laughs> and this golf, he just had it painted, this golf ball came over, yeah. landed smack bang in the middle of his bonnet. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I made this massive mark <laughs> in his car and he couldn't believe it. 
Uh, and, Je and Mark was probably the first person that he had an M MG, is it MGBT? Yes. Is it, is it called? Yes. Like a, yep. a sky baby blue. Gorgeous. Which is a beautiful. So the, the, all, all, all the band members love their cars as well. Yeah, was it a um, bit of a competition of who had the kind of coolest No, car? no, because they, they were the first ones they had and they're the only ones they've ever had. I, I remember Gary was a bit in competition with me because he had a, he had a three, is it a 320 SL? Yes. And when he found out that I had a, a SL 500, he got an SL 600 badge <laughs> and put it on the back. <laughs> put Anything it on the, you can do, I can yeah, do Yeah, put it on the back of his. <laughs> and he got, I'm not letting him outdo me. I'm the lead singer. <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, so yes. that, was, that was the beginning of the that was a, collection. That was the beginning, yeah. And this is when you suddenly realised that actually they're quite good investments, they're, they're, you know, it's a lovely thing to be able to take. I mean, these are just some exceptional... I mean, look, you've got a girl wing. I mean, it just... Not, even, inve not even investments. I don't even think I, I ever bought a car and thought, this is an oh, investment. You know, really? Even with, the, even with the girl wing, you know, you, I bought that... I bought that at quite a low price, and now I look at what they're worth now. Oh, yeah, that, that needs to be in Cottonwall. And this here, this, this um, 356 Prie, yeah. 1953. And you've got the Recaro seats. Chris and... Harris has um, raced it, and he's won Tour Auto three times in Incredible. France. And that was my first, one of the first um, boxes I ticked was to have a race at Goodwood Revival. And I that raced that at Goodwood Revival, and I was absolutely—I was, the yeah, I yeah. was absolutely crapping myself. Oh God! Because I took it round in—I took it round um, in qualifying the day before. Yeah. And I went off at No Name. Oh. And I was, I, it was one of those where there's so much grass and No Name, and I was literally sliding. G going. And you could hear that music. <laughs> Dim, 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 dim. <laughs> and I was I was thinking, I can't even do anything about this and scrape down all one side. And I thought, I know you don't want to go. And it was one of those tires. things where you crashed, and I thought, I'm not racing ever again in my yeah, life. I'm, I'm so it. embarrassed. Yeah. Even though all the best, best of the best racers crash. Yeah. You know, I was so embarrassed thinking, I shouldn't be doing this. I should just stick to singing. You know, and you were in that car? I was in this car here. Did yeah, you? Some, yeah. And, um, and I was so embarrassed. And it's the next day, they got it all taped up completely. Um, but it had an oil leak, so I had to retire the car five minutes before the end. So, oh, no. Because the chassis was bent, and it was like... Mm. So. There, is, there is moments when, when you crash, and I've had this quite a few times, and I'm kind of sitting there, and we've stopped. And obviously, the race is still going. And, you, and I don't know whether you've had it. Just complete embarrassment, but panic of... Shall I, shall I go? Shall I not go? What should I do? Yeah. Am I, what state is the car in? And the things that's going on in your mind and you're going, oh my God, everyone's looking at me. Yeah, you know, it. it's just... Even the people racing by are looking at you. You're not, <laughs> you're not even concentrating. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're not, you know, it was, it was such an embarrassing moment. Yeah. And I've, I've had it in my, my Lotus Cartina as well, where you've crashed. And because and, of loads of oil on the track and you just feel so embarrassed. You're mm -hmm. thinking, why am I even doing this? And I think because I have a name and I'm, and I'm, and I'm you know, I don't like using the word famous or yep. it, it's you. kind of, you, you think automatic, you think everybody's zooming in on you. Everybody's looking at you thinking, oh, that's Howard yeah, from exactly. Take That. He, 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 can't even, he can't even drive his car, you know, he's yeah. smashed his car, he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be racing, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's an horrible, absolutely horrible feeling, and yeah. you know. But yeah. the reason why we love it is because there's, I don't think there's a better feeling when you're, when you really nail a corner or a yeah. lap or yeah. that start line, and you know the lights go off, and it's like, let's yeah. go. Get that first five minutes, that first couple of laps out of the way. I'm, I'm actually, yeah. I'm, I'm in my element, but. Yeah. That on the start grid, you know, and everyone else is there, and you know, yeah, all these old, old school racers, and yeah. thinking, it's terrifying. Oh, God, yeah, it's scary. <laughs>